it is day one of the launch. We're getting out for a quick spin to sort of warm the bikes up, warm the bodies up and check out what we, uh, the first thoughts are of the new SRAM Force ETAP. No, Axis. We'll get it right before the end of the video. We're being looked after good and proper by SRAM. Mechanic, Brooklyn is just, just tinkering with my bike a bit, tilting the saddle. I'm on the Trekamonda, Zip 404 Firecrest wheels, uh, Schwabler tyres, the job lot. We've got a proper setup, a pro setup, and we've even got a pro looking after us. Keel. Not pro anymore. Look at them. Look at them legs. We both have our leg warmers on. Yeah, I've got. Don't worry. I grew these leg warmers over the course of many months. Well, I tell you what, the roads round here are absolutely gorgeous. First impressions. I am so glad these guys have gone with the same lever hood shape as. The current or new rival, because it's a group set I have recommended to many people who don't want to spend huge sums of money. It's still expensive, but not huge sums of money. Just purely for its function and leverhood shape. Massive improvement over the uh, current force. Function-wise, it's been a bit of a flat road so far we've been playing on, but so I've not been able to put it under too much pressure. But yeah, faultless so far. We'll see what it's like after two road rides and a gravel ride. In fact, I'll tell you what is really nice about the group set. Just a little detail, the logos are like rainbow when you look at them. So very similar to uh, the cassette and chain that they uh, make for world champions, where they light up with a, a glistening of rainbow colours. There we are, they've caught us up. Come on lads, chop chop. If I'm honest, I can't tell massive amounts so far between this and the current rival. It shifts, well, pretty much identically, if not identically. Between this and the old force, which I've been running for probably a couple of years now on my personal bike, it's a little bit, I would say a little bit faster, but I think that might possibly be down to age worn cassettes worn chains on my personal bike we'll find out all the numbers all the, the details of the uh, how they've changed it in a moment because they're gonna tell us all about it all right we are here with Dan Stefuk I've said that right you did product manager for SRAM and also possibly best cardigan here at the launch thank you I take pride in that it's been uh, I was looking forward to that award so I appreciate it Awesome. All right, we're going to learn a little bit about the new, the new force axis. You've dropped the E tap, haven't right. you? E tap continues to be the shift logic: right hand hard, left hand easy. But it's part of the axis ecosystem. So moving forward, new force axis. Right. Question is: Is this a trickle up technology group set or triple down technology group set? Because obviously, uh, last year was it last year you released the rival version of this, and this looks well the lever hood shape all that lot looks very similar to that and not like the old red or force for sure i think it's it, it's a sum of all parts it's a little bit of the best parts of rival and the best parts of red that meet at a price point at the force price point that'll bring the advantages of both group sets to to new consumers so yeah as you mentioned new hood ergonomics you know, with the introduction of rival we've got a lot of great feedback of the you know more smaller compact hood um, but uh, this is paired with a carbon fiber brake lever, a little bit of a pro update to the profile of the shift paddle, which makes sure you don't break into your knuckles or into the handlebars and, uh, yeah, fits larger hands all the way down to smaller high ends with, uh, you know, adjustable reach adjust using, uh, it's a simple 2.5 millimeter Allen key. So that's the ergonomics and, you know, another bit from, from the rival side. Another bit, you know, we took a lot of the technology from, from red of integrating, um, Vastly improved front shifting performance into you know, integrated chain rings that were able to machine the pickup features with improvements to our front mech. Um, provides you know, the stiffest, 
most accurate power meter in a much lighter package than previously. And then we have expanded our gearing range to include now a 5037 gearing combo for, you know, those performance road riders. That's for the fast lads, for fast, the fast ones. people out there. Yeah, I'll be behind them. Next, what else is new? Rear mech shifting, is, has that been improved? Not that it was bad previously, but have you, have you changed that? So the rear mech, um, we've aligned around a single 36 tooth maximum rear derailleur, meaning it will cater to, cater to a 1028, a 1030, 1033, and a 1036 cassette, all with a single derailleur. Just focusing on simplicity for the consumer. One derailleur can handle everything. And that's whether you're going fast or you wanna be able to climb the most steepest of climbs. That same rear mech can um, be run as a two by race or road setup, as well as a one by given the clutch mechanism yeah. for chain management. Um, some changes that we've been continuing to roll out are just finishes to the cassette. Um, a nickel chrome finish on the on the cassette on the individual cogs. So instead of that, the old black, black finish, right? Correct. And that's something you'll see throughout, you know, all new force will have the nickel chrome finish. And that was really focusing on longevity of the cassette, smooth shifting, and uh, really quieter running noise overall. And it's uh, improvements that really add up to a much better drivetrain. Talk about improvements. People like to improve themselves. Power meters are a big thing now. Prices have come down. Sure. You can see them on a lot of bikes now. What's going on with the new, with, with the power meters? The power meter is now integrated into the chain rings. Again, providing the most stiff and accurate, dependable, um, consistent number for the, for the rider. And on the one by front, we're moving to a direct mount style chain ring as well, from a 38 through 46. But the power solution for one by will be a spindle based power meter. Um, again, that's just a simple, elegated, elegant, integrated um, option for, for riders that want it both power on their two by and one by setups. All right, shifting obviously, it's very um, natural feeling. Can we set this up with blips? Can we set you can multiple <laughs> shifters all over the spot? You could set it up with even more blips than, uh, than you were before. Yeah. Um, so one of the goals to decrease the overall um, hood size to improve finger wrap and, and comfort. Um, we've eliminated an auxiliary port that was on previous force. So previously with force, you can only have one satellite shifter. So now with the integration of our, uh, or development of our wireless blip, rider can pair up to six satellite shift locations on what their that, handlebar. What, three on each or six? Or three six. on each, you could have four on one side and two on the other, but yeah, you can have six satellite shifters Originally, the buttons were designed to be sprint buttons for the Pro Peloton, yeah. um, but it evolved to be a climbing position, or as gravel riders like to have clip-ons, you yeah. can shift from that, or just a true triathlon setup, you can have that on your extensions and on your base bar. What about, what about for droppers and stuff like that? So you're able to customize the controls to be just standard left, right. Um, you can have one, um, one button assigned to the front mech, um, as well as we're evolving to be able to expand, be able to control, um, you know, MTB drivetrains as well, dropper posts, and those are things that'll come um, down the line. But uh, that'll all be customizable, and you can assign um, features and functions to each of the wireless flips that you use. And obviously people going further and more extreme with um, gravel riding, can we set this up as a mullet group set? Certainly can. Now, of course, you know, we have our Explore gravel oriented, that's around the 1044 cassette. And it can be ridden on, you know, tarmac and, and you know, gravel that's, you know, you know the terrain. But yeah, as you're bikepacking or getting a little bit more where you're blurring the lines between single track, of course, continues to be uh, mullet compatible, which is based around our, our Eagle drivetrain 50 or a 52 tooth cassette, or yeah, 50 or 52 tooth cassette using the MTB chain and uh, chain cassette. Without weight, have we dropped the weight? Overall, depending on your combination with power, without, depending on your chain ring size, you're between 94 and 104 grams lighter, which is pretty significant when it's already a pretty damn light group set. Awesome, awesome. We've got an hour and a half gravel loop lined up. As for what I've heard about the gravel around these parts, Primo's the word, and flying over, just looking down out the plane. There just seems to be roots everywhere, little ones that lead in here, there, and everywhere. So I'm proper excited about it. Turned a bit nippy, so we're wrapped up, ready to roll. 
Okay, I am back from Portugal. I had a lovely time over there riding the bike. And I give myself time to think about what I think about the group set because, well, I only got to play on it two or three times. So do keep in mind, this is a first ride review. It's not an in-depth one, but what do I think about it? Well, to be honest, it's more of a refresh and update rather than a whole new group set. And that isn't a bad thing, I don't think. Basically, what SRAM have done, have taken all the little updates that they do over the lifespan of that first generation group set and repackaged them into this new group set. They've updated a few little bits and pieces here. For instance, the lever hood shape and the blades, which are a massive welcome. I made a group set that I think will appeal to more people than the previous generation. Now, what do I mean about all them little updates? Well, that very first Tram Force Axis group set that they released will not be the same as the last version that leaves the factory under the same colourways, the same model. They will have updated the internals here, the electronics there, basically the bits that they've learned along the way that do need updating to make it a really good group set. So as I say, they've taken all that knowledge, all them lessons and applied it to this new group set. A group set that well works faultlessly, I found. I never had any problems with it. It feels like a group set that definitely sits in that camp that goes up against the Ultegra a lot more now than the previous generation. I always thought the previous generation felt a little bit rough and ready, a little bit bulky, shall we say even ugly looking. I do have it on my bikes or one of my bikes and it works great. But yeah, it never felt premium. This new version definitely feels premium. And it looks the part as well. That glittery black surface is definitely eye-catching. As I said, the lever hood shape's all changed. That has, can we say, trickled up from the new rival. Another thing I like about the group set is that it doesn't feel like they're forcing you to upgrade. It doesn't feel like they're forcing you to go out and buy a whole new setup. Like all the Axis group sets out there, whether it's the mountain bike stuff or the road stuff, it all works together. So say you've got the old Force group set and you crash and you need new levers, you can just go out and buy these ones and it'll work perfectly well with them. So it's maybe a group set that you can upgrade over time if you've got the current version. Am I upset that it's not a whole new mind-blowing generation of a group set? Nah, not really. It's just nice to see that they're releasing a product that should work faultlessly. Or at least that's what we're told. And it'll definitely look the part on more premium bikes than the old group set as well. And as we all know, looking the part is um, quite a bit of the cycling scene now. All in all, I'm pretty happy with what they've released. And hopefully I'll be getting a group set in for a, a long term test at some point. Or at least that's what they've said, so stay tuned. What do you think though, people? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a like, give us a subscribe if you want to. And as always, thanks for watching and enjoy your riding.